From the Four Rivers Cultural Centre in Ontario, Oregon, we bring you the third annual Tradition Keepers Festival, highlighting cultural artists in Oregon's Treasure Valley and beyond. In this episode, you'll meet saddle maker and leather crafter, Claire Kerberg. There are many different styles of leather working. I'm sure we've all seen sandals, boots, um, you know, Western apparel and the Western world. That's kind of where I live. So we have saddles, horse tack. Uh, you mentioned I do a lot of briefcases and purses, belts, earrings, um, all kinds of things. So I think all of us just kind of start. I started in saddlery and then you find different avenues and things that appeal to you. And of course the money part, you have to do things that sell and pay the bills. So I've sort of gravitated towards the handbags, wallets, earrings, that sort of thing at this point in my life. I did, I actually started when I was in high school um, I really have always just loved art. And I grew up on a cattle ranch here in John Day. So I've always loved horses and that Western kind of cowboy lifestyle. And saddlery was where horses and art kind of came together in my mind. So I thought, well, let's just learn a little bit about it. And I studied with, um, Tom Berry, who's a local saddle maker and has become a very good friend of mine. And from there, I went to Spokane Falls Community College. They had a two-year saddle making program there with Verlaine Desgrange. And I graduated through that. And then I studied with Randy Severe in Pendleton. And then I went on to study with uh, Dale Harwood. I got a scholarship through the Traditional Cowboy Arts Association to go shadow him for a week. Um, watch him build a saddle and just pick his brain. So that was really good. And then, you know, you meet people. Uh, I met a boot maker named Mo Wellful and said, hey, can you teach me to make boots? And every so often you stumble across somebody that knows something that you don't. And I just try to learn wherever I can. You know, that's just kind of one of those funny things. Of life kind of takes you where you need to be. I did when I was in saddle school, I took some custom orders for different things to help pay for my school. And one of my very first orders was handbags for a woman that I actually worked for. And she ordered one for herself and for her two daughters. And in doing that project, there's a lot more freedom to be creative with something like that versus a saddle. Um, you know, you can add different colors, different types of leathers, fringe, hair on hide. You can really get creative with a handbag. So that really appealed to me. There weren't so many restraints. And then also the turnaround time. You know, it, you've got a lot of material and a lot of time invested in a saddle versus some of these smaller projects. Um, a bag or a wallet or the earrings in particular, you can really turn them out quick. One big thing that I learned in the saddle school with Verlaine was pattern making. Um, we did not get to buy a pack of patterns and use those. We had to draw our own patterns. So, and in that school that was saddlery, but that transfers to every other thing you can make. So, if I get a wild idea in my head for a bracelet or a purse, or if I wanna do something a little more unique with my shafts and chinks, I have the ability to draw that pattern. So I really can take these wild ideas in my head and put them first onto paper and then transfer that to leather. This is going to be called tooling and the difference is when you're tooling you start with this little knife it's called a swivel knife and um, this is a strop that helps maintain the integrity of the blade 
So when you're tooling, you always start with these swivel knife cuts. And you want them to be approximately a third to a half way through the leather. When you're stamping, um, you can see all these tools in the background here. These are stamps. And stamping refers to a geometric pattern like a basket stamp. Um, they have a few different geometric stamps. But the, the carving or the tooling is the more, I would say more artistic. You really have a lot of freedom to do whatever your mind and your tools can come up with. Yeah, some of my bigger projects have taken, you know, days and weeks, but that just creates a little shadow along these lines. And they're all just different textures. Kind of made a mistake right here, so I've got to rub that out with my little modeling tool. Next up, this is called a pear shader or a thumbprint. And again, we're just adding layers of texture. And you might notice that I make a great big heavy whack and then I kind of soften up as I go. That's just to create more depth to the piece. Nice. So now we've, we've got it pear shaded and the next thing I'm going to do is called a camouflage tool. And we'll talk about tool makers real quick. A lot of the tools I'm using are Barry King tools. Um, he makes a very nice tool at a reasonable cost. So I end up getting quite a few things from him. I'm not sure exactly what his process is. Um, these, I would say, are machined. I do have a couple in here that I made from, I made that from a nail. <laughs> so this is called a pedal lifter and I can show you what it does real quick. If you look right here, I've got my cut line and if I want to go in and just lift that up a little bit to give more depth, then you can see it just pops that up a little bit. And when you're talking about the difference between carving and stamping, if, if I were stamping, I would be kind of just whack, whack, whack going along with the tool. But when this is either referred to as carving or tooling, and when you're doing this style, you are making a real deep impression and then kind of lightening up as you go. And you're doing a lot of different textures at a lot of different depths. Um, so here I'm done with these stamping tools and I'm gonna get my swivel knife back out and do what's called decorative cuts. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's what really brings the piece to life. And you just go back in over the top of all these stamps and make delicate little cuts. But they kind of bring the wow factor. I'm looking to see how deep the lines are cut into the leather and how clear the impressions are. You'll find that um, see, so those are done and ready to cut out now. I really enjoy it. I like getting to the end of a day and having something that I can look back on and say, oh, I did that. Even, you know, I still do ranch, my husband and I. If you're, say, putting up hay in the summertime, you go out and you mow a field and you can look back and see what you did. And 
I really enjoy that. So I like that with the leather work as well. You know, I start out my day and I have just a plain piece of leather. And then by the end of the day, I have some sellable products and that's appealing to me. And it's very soothing to be in my, my studio or my shop and listening to my music and kind of just tapping out some leather. <laughs> Instagram and Facebook is where I do most of my business. I think everybody is on those social media sites. So that's the easiest way to find me is just look for Claire Kerberg on Instagram or Facebook. And I do have an Etsy shop where I sell some of my stuff and that's just Etsy.com. And again, you look for Claire Kerberg.